This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to recover a horseshoe rescue buoy. Let's get started and show you how to build a horseshoe buoy cover. First, we need to do the patterning. We're going to use the old foam out of this old horseshoe cover, and we're going to use Naugahyde Universal as a covering for the new cover. So we're going to pattern it from the old foam. We've traced around the foam and now are labeling it so we know what side of the foam this cover should be placed on. And then we're going to duplicate it again, patterning around the opposite side. Once the foam has been patterned around, we need to add a half inch for seam allowance. Here we're using a flexible ruler. However, you can just cut a half inch away from the first mark that you placed on the fabric with scissors. It's pretty easy. Here she's just taking a guess of what a half inch should be. That's the way I recommend doing it. Once you have one of these cut out, you could just use it as a template. This already has the half inch included all around the perimeter, and she's using that as a template for the second. Now a top plate and a bottom plate have been created. Angela's creating a straight line along the bottom edge of the fabric, then she measures the foam. This foam is two and three quarter inches, so she's going to make boxing that is three and three quarter inches, one inch wider for seam allowance. This Naugahyde Universal fabric is 54 inches wide. We're going to cut three strips of boxing that is three and three quarter inches wide. So she's marked it with that yellow grease pencil. You could use a pencil as well, and then she's cutting it with scissors. Now she has three strips of fabric for the boxing. Two will be used for the zipper plaque. We'll be using a YKK number 10 continuous length coil zipper. And we're gonna apply the quarter inch basting tape for canvas down each side of the zipper. Here we're starting with this side. And notice we're applying the basting tape as far away from the teeth as possible to keep the glue away from it. We're measuring around the foam to determine approximately the length of the zipper plaque boxing here to ensure that it's not more than 54 inches. Here's where the zipper will stop and end, and it's 45 inches, so it's perfect. So we need about 50 inches of zipper and at least 50 inches of zipper plaque material. Since the fabric is 54 inches and we've cut two of them for this, it's, it's going to be a perfect size. Now we're basting the zipper plaque material on top of the zipper. And you'll notice the teeth are facing the actual surface of the vinyl material. Here she's folded it back so that you can see the teeth. It's facing the material. Now she takes it over to the Sayer at 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. And she's going to sew approximately a 6 millimeter straight stitch right along the side of the teeth. You'll notice the fabric is folded, but it is not folded over the teeth. We actually leave the teeth exposed in this application. So the fold runs right alongside of this coil zipper teeth. Next, we'll apply another strip of the double-sided tape for canvas to the opposite side. This is the quarter-inch size. We also sell a three-eighths inch size, but the quarter-inch size is better for zippers. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and we'll base the other side of the boxing to this side of the zipper. Notice that the vinyl surface, the yellow side, is facing down against the outside surface of the opposite boxing and she's basting it right along the edge of that zipper flange. Yeah. Now all we need to do is sew that side just as we did the other side. She creates a fold so the fold is running right along the teeth and then stitches a straight stitch all the way down its length. Notice how she folds the material as she feeds it through the sewing machine. The Sayerite 111 sewing machine is a compound walking foot straight stitch sewing machine. Combined with the MCSCR power system, you get a great sewing machine with phenomenal slow speed control and power. This system cannot be beat. This zipper plaque is too wide, so here she's using the boxing that was cut to three and three quarter inches, and she's finding the center location, and then she marks the two sides. This is where the zipper plaque needs to be cut down to size so that it equals the same size as the boxing, which is three and three quarter inches for our situation. 
Angela's going to strike a line down those marks that she uh, measured along the side. Then she's going to use scissors and cut the Naga Hide Universal fabric to size. Now that the zipper plaque is done, we'll concentrate on the boxing. We folded the short end of one end of the boxing to approximately a half inch and we'll sew a straight stitch to secure that in place, reversing at the beginning and also at the end to lock the stitch in place. Angela actually creates this half inch fold on both of the short ends. However, we'll have to cut one off when we're done putting it on. So I would recommend not doing that. Now she measures the material to make sure it's going to come very close to the bottom of the cover and then she's going to place marks to indicate where this will start to be sewn onto the actual plate. Now she's also going to transfer those marks onto both plates. Okay, You want to do that exact same thing on the opposite side. You want to leave about two inches of the boxing hanging. That's why she's placing those marks approximately two inches away from the end of the fabric. Now she's taken one of the plaque sides, either top or bottom, doesn't matter which, and is matching it up to the boxing. She's going to use the deluxe magnetic sewing guide here and position it a half inch away from the needle position. Then she's going to start sewing right where those marks were placed on the fabric. Notice that the outside surfaces of the fabric are facing each other as she sews. Now she'll sew a half inch from the raw side of the fabric and that guide will help keep everything a half inch away from the edge. Notice that she's pulling the top fabric so that it's even with the underside of the boxing. So as she sews, she pulls the edges so that they are flush and continues to sew. Take your time. The slower you are at this, the more accurate your stitching will be. And do not pull one side more than the other. Do not stretch or shrink the fabric. Now here at the opposite end, we'll stop sewing right where we place that mark and do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Notice that there's excess fabric here at this end, so we're going to cut that off. Now we're going to create that half inch hem as we did on the other side so that this side is equal with the opposite side. They look about right there. So she's going to trim a little bit more of the fabric and then she's going to take it to the sewing machine and lock that half inch hem in place. Now we'll take the opposite side of the plaque and lay it so that the outside surfaces are facing each other. And then we're going to start it right at those marks that we placed on it and also the boxing. We'll start sewing at those positions and we'll be sure that they are lined up evenly. Now there's more material that's obviously being fed through the machine because we have one side already sewn on. But this is still not a very difficult process. Uh, if you don't have one of those magnetic guides, you can just uh, place a masking tape down on the bed of the sewing machine and use that as a guide. You'll notice that Angela sews about every four inches or so, stops, and makes adjustments to the fabric and continues to sew. That's the process all around the perimeter of this horseshoe buoy. Before coming all the way to the end, you want to stop a couple inches short, right where we marked the fabric, because we need to join this boxing to the zipper plaque in a later step. That's where I stopped because I need to work with these. We'll now cut some one inch polyester webbing. This is a black webbing to size with the Sarite Edge Hot Knife. This hot knife seals the edge of the webbing. It heats up in about three seconds. Now we'll sew in a D-ring to this assembly. And you notice the webbing was cut to approximately a foot long in length, so each leg is six inches. Now we're going to take that fabric that we sewed together and turn it so that it is wrong side facing out. And we're going to place that webbing approximately in the same location as it was on the old horseshoe buoy. It is always easier to take some stitches out so that we can insert that D-ring attached to the webbing rather than attaching it while we're sewing these cover pieces together. So Angela's using a seam ripper to rip some stitches out so she can tuck the webbing in between the, the boxing and the plates. 
on both sides. And the webbing is too long, however, that's better than being too short. So now she's going to take it to the sewing machine and sew across it, reversing at the beginning and also reversing over the webbing to secure it in place. And then she'll follow that same procedure for the opposite side. Now we'll use the Sarite Edge Hot Knife and cut the webbing so that it's flush with the edge of the fabric. If you don't have a professional hot knife like this, you can use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. We'll cut another 12 inch strip of webbing with the Sarite Edge Hot Knife and we'll insert a 1 inch stainless steel D-ring over the middle of that so that the legs are approximately 6 inches. And we're going to use that for this location on the uh, cover. Next, we're going to join the zipper plaque to the boxing, but before we can do that, we need to install the slider. So we're going to pull the teeth apart just by gripping both ends. Then we're going to install this number 10 coil single pull slider on the end, starting with the fat end and feeding it onto both sides so that both sides are even. Once they are started into position, then we'll pull on the slider holding the two pieces of fabric at the same time, and that installs the slider appropriately on this YKK coil continuous zipper. Now we'll join the zipper plaque to the boxing that's already installed on the two plates. We'll position it so that it's approximately an inch from the end and then we'll place that webbing with the D-ring in the middle of the assembly so we can sew that in at the same time as we sew these two panels together. She looks good. Here's the underside and here's the outside. Now we can sew that zipper plaque to the actual cover. We're going to use that magnetic guide again and position it a half inch away from the uh, needle and we'll start sewing with the reverse here to lock the stitch in place and continue to sew around the entire perimeter securing the zipper plaque to either this the top plate or the bottom plate doesn't matter which side because we need to do it to both. Here we're going to show as she rounds the corner and you notice she's pulling the fabric so the edges of the fabric are almost flush. Take your time. Go slow. That's one advantage of the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. You've got really nice slow speed control. The Sarite Ultra Feed sewing machine also works wonderfully with these type of projects. We've chosen to use the Tanara thread, which is a lifetime guaranteed thread to sew this project. You could also use Helios. It too is a lifetime guaranteed thread. Another option is V92 polyester. It's UV resistant, but not UV proof. If you're sewing this project with the home sewing machine, we recommend using V69 polyester. Another thread option is a V92 anti-wick polyester thread. This slightly waxed thread will help to prevent water from wicking into the needle holes. It also prolongs the life in the sun, so that's another possibility. Angela's coming very close to the opposite end of the boxing, and she'll stop short of that so that she can sew those two edges together in a later step. Here she's determining where the zipper plaque should be cut short. She wants to leave enough material that she can still sew it to the boxing on the other side. So she's marking the fabric at that location. She'll pull the slider back so the slider is still attached to the teeth and then she'll use scissors to cut across the teeth and also the zipper plaque fabric. Since the teeth are now separate, she's going to pull the slider off. Now she's going to reinstall the slider. Now the slider's running in the opposite direction. But because she's pulled it off and reinstalled it, the teeth are now together so we can easily sew through them. She's going to use the Sarite Edge Hot Knife and she's going to melt the very ends of the teeth that kind of binds them together and also the zipper plaque to keep it from unraveling. This is probably not necessary, but it's not a bad idea. 
Now she'll fold that zipper plaque on top of the boxing on the opposite side and take a pencil and mark where the zipper plaque will end right on the opposite side of the boxing. Since it's marked, she can now take it to the sewing machine and she knows exactly where the zipper plaque should be started on the opposite end of the boxing when she sews it together. And that's what she's going to do next. She'll sew the zipper plaque to the boxing, starting the stitch approximately a half inch from the end of the zipper plaque, sewing a straight stitch through the teeth and all, securing them in position. This leaves a little tail of fabric, but that tail of fabric will be used to secure the webbing strap that has the hook on it. We'll do that next. We've taken a length of one inch polyester webbing and are now going to sew a stainless steel snap hook to the end. We'll reverse here and we'll create a Z stitch, not shown completely in the video. For our horseshoe buoy, this length of webbing, when complete from the end of the hook to where it's sewing, is approximately 16 inches. Not only will she sew it here, but she'll also sew it very close to that fold, reversing here to lock it in place. Before we sew the final side of the cover closed, we need to seal up that little gap here at the middle where we uh, left it open so that we could sew the boxing and the zipper plaque together. So we'll take that to the sewing machine and sew that closed. Now we can sew the final side of the cover closed. Be sure the webbing's on the inside so you don't sew that by mistake. And we'll start here at the opposite end and sew all around the perimeter. Oops, that webbing came out again. We'll need to tuck that back in before we get to that point. We're going to sew a half inch from the end and we're going to use that magnetic guide as a guide to keep our stitch approximately a half inch from the raw edges of the fabric. Now all we need to do is continue to sew all around the perimeter as we did previously on any of the other applications. We're not going to show all this. However, before we get to the very end, we're going to verify that uh, we are not pulling or stretching one side more than the other. So here Angela has about a foot and a half to two foot of sewing and she's verifying that uh, as she continues to sew, she will not have one panel or one side be longer than the other. If it were not even, what she would do is she would actually stretch one of the sides as she sews it together so that hopefully at the end they would match up. It is not required for our application, which means that she has not stretched one side more than the other. That's good. Our sewing is now complete. We just need to do some reversing here to lock our stitch in place. We'll turn this horseshoe buoy right side out and we'll start stuffing in the foam that we had from our other buoy.
as she zips the cover over the foam, you'll notice there are a few wrinkles at the U in the center of the horseshoe buoy. That is not uncommon. In fact, uh, if you look at any horseshoe buoy, you'll notice that there are wrinkles inside the U portion. So this is all there is to making a horseshoe buoy. Before we go, we need to show you the materials list. This is all that it took to build our horseshoe buoy. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite webpage or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.